the bustling city of Port Harcourt, capital of Rivers State. Popularly known as the Garden City, it's often lashed by heavy rains all year round. Indeed, the pace of life in this big city can be described as moderate. But beneath the sedate traffic and wet streets, a seething political firestorm has been ignited. At the center of it all is a divided legislature, the People's Democratic Party's leadership, and the executive. My dear colleagues, distinguished members at the gallery, I thank you for electing me this day as the new speaker of River Cedars Assembly. That I am calling on the EFCC to come and audit the River Cedars Assembly account. And accordingly, 15 members has been suspended. Politics is said to be a game of numbers. Now, these are the lawmakers supporting the leadership of Honorable Telemaba Amakri as Speaker and by extension, Governor Chibike Amechi. The House is together as one, though there was an attempted coup against an elected uh, leadership. But uh, since you cannot play something or nothing, that was foiled. My name is Honorable Mrs. Irene Nimba, the Deputy Whip of the House. I represent Portaco Constituency too. Okay. My name is Honorable Innocent Barico. I represent Gokana Constituency. I am Josiah John Olu. I represent Eleme Constituency in the University House of Assembly under the leadership of Right Honorable Otele Dan Amagri. That's right. The so-called five members that sat that day were in a hurry to undermine democracy in the River State House of Assembly. And these are the three standing out of the five lawmakers on the other side of the divide. Since this thing happened, people have been writing. There are so many video clips. People give their explanations. Even people who were not there. I've listened to several interviews. People who were not in the, on the floor of the house, they've come to say what they want to say. Well, for me, it's immaterial at this point. What is important is that we have a new speaker. If they, some people are not happy about it. There are, there are courts of law. We keep hearing of five, but this is something they had to vote. So since we are not there, and the new speaker has emerged, and the other neutral people that will show that a proper thing had been done, is a sergeant of arms who was performing his duty. But this seeming minority also has the support of the ruling party's leadership in the state. Once more, I want to congratulate Rector of Reverse BP and wish to reassure him that PDP River State is behind him and will continuously offer our maximum cooperation. He's a factional chairman. There was an election, a chairman was elected, a, a court judgment brought him as chairman. That judgment is being contested in court. So, common sense should tell you that he's not speaking for all members of the party. It is strange that Rivers is a one-party state where practically every elective position is held by the People's Democratic Party. Or is it? Amechi is already a member of the APC. He's working with the APC structure. So, if Amechi wants to remain in the party, if you look at Article 9 of the PDP Constitution, it spells out what members of the party should do. And Amechi has breached completely Article 9 of the PDP Constitution. How can the governor refuse to subject himself to the party's authority? At what point did he refuse to subject himself to, to the party's authority? The governor was elected by his colleagues as chairman of the NGF. That should be the happiness of every member of the PDP, that one of our own was elected chairman. How can a, a father, a father turn on his children and want to eat the children? Is that how you bring peace? The situation appears to be deadlocked all the way to the upper echelons of the party's leadership. How the PDP in River State intends to untangle this political Gordian knot, for now, is extremely difficult to figure out. Charles Eruka, reporting for Channels Television News. Well, Professor Yelowo Yewo joins us this morning. He's the Dean, Faculty of Law, University of Lagos. Morning, I thank you for coming on today. And I was the dean. I was oh, the okay. to be the dean. Oh, all right. Yeah. Uh, apologies on that. But interestingly, many of the, the chaps who are involved in this are lawyers. Mm. Uh, and then you ask yourself, and how do they just 
throw caution to the wind, disregard the law, and then do what you do. Well, I, I don't know about many of them being lawyers, or but uh, basically, <laughs> I don't know about that. Because if they are lawyers, truly there's a code of ethics and a code of conduct that should guide people of the bar. And uh, at least knowledge of the law should override politics and sentiments and be able to be guided in the right way to, you know, function. Uh, but basically, you can see that what's is dictating their action is pure politics. And the politics they are playing is the politics of the ends justify the means. So basically all reason, logic or law is thrown overboard. Mm, but you know when you hear people talk about um, uh, or conduct themselves on the streets without regard to the law, they seem dictatorial in their tendencies, you think that you never see it at that level. But these are men who've gone past several stages. We elected them into certain positions of leadership and authority. And there they are. Uh, it, it just appears as though the rule of law to them means little. This certainly concerns Well, me basically, well. What, you, what you see is the practice of uh, the phenomenon of impunity, which is something that is very common in our polity. Uh, because in other you know, jurisdictions. Even, I don't like citing, uh, you know, Europe and America in Africa. If you go to Ghana, if you go to South Africa, if anybody, you know, infringes or does something that is unlawful, that is illegal, there will be sanctioned. So we have the police that is supposed to be, uh, you know, policing as it were and enforcing the law. And if you look at our constitution in section 215, we have a hierarchy of command from the IG to the yeah. CP. And in this embroglio that's going on, the commissioner of police has been petitioned against by the governor. But if you look at section 215 itself, the commander general of the police is the president because the inspector general of police is supposed to be under the authority of the president. So you ask yourself, what is going on? Is it not to the knowledge of the president? Is it not to the knowledge of the inspector general of police? What are they doing about this? Laws are being violated. Nobody is being arrested. People's heads are being broken with all of us looking at it. Nobody has been arrested for any violence. It seems like if there's a different kind of law that applies to the general public as opposed to the law that applies to the political players in Nigeria. And that is what builds this principle and this phenomenon of impunity for people to want to do things without fear of sanction because there's not going to be sanction. And the genesis of this, you know, the, 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 the sub-theme of this came out in the National uh, the Governors Forum oh. where you had um, uh, 16 people claiming to have been voted in against the 19 votes. And the president went ahead and acknowledged the person that supposedly won the election where we all saw that the counting of the votes did not result in its winning an election. And of course, the person who won the election is the governor of River State. Well, if you have done it successfully in a permutation of 16 overriding 19, then logically five should be able to override 17 or 15 or whatever is the number of the majority against the minority that played out before all of us in the State House of Assembly. But don't we find ourselves no. in a fix here? Because, I mean, unlike the Governor's Forum where we saw, you know, through amateur video captured there and we could say, okay, well, this does look like what would have transpired within the Governor's Forum. We do not have evidence. The five maintained that there was a proper impeachment, that there was a proper setting, and that there were more than five. There were not five. Even though we haven't heard other figures being you know, said as loudly as the five, don't we find ourselves in a quagmire in terms of being able to ascertain if there were truly more than five in that situation? Well, the, the bottom line is that even before they went into the assembly to vote, they have been divided into camps. And the majority side, far in number than the minority. So in, in, in logical sequence, following even the decision of our court, you cannot force yourself to impeach you know, uh, one of the members that you have put in place unless you follow the due process of the law. Unless they are able to convince us that the due process of the law was followed, then of course it stands to reason that what we saw on television 
the pigs that there was a minority which attempted to overthrow the majority. And democracy is not about that. Democracy is about the rule of the majority. The minority may have their say, but the majority should logically have their way. Just before we go back to the Constitution, can we just... There was a statement the uh, Mr. BP made. He said, my colleagues in the gallery, just to clear something, do members of the House sit in the gallery? Well, not for purposes of uh, parliamentary proceedings, if they are to participate as members. You, you can't be a member and be sitting in the gallery. Gallery are for non-members. So if you are in the gallery, then something must have kept you in the gallery. <laughs> Okay, back to the country. You mentioned something earlier about the position of the president, yes. the inspector general of police, and um, that ties down to the commissioner. Now, a build-up to this is like complaints by the governor about uh, an, um, a non-cordial relationship with the commissioner, so to speak. Do you think something should have been done? If something had been done, would we have gotten to this point? Well, maybe, maybe not. That, that would be a lot. There will be a lot of conjecture in that. Mm. But what has happened is what we are dealing with that is right before us. But does the governor have a right to demand the removal of the commissioner of police? The governor can make known to whoever is in charge, the IG and the president, the relationship between him as the chief executive in the state and the commissioner of police. And if it doesn't augur well for peace, order, and good governance, reason would demand that such petition be investigated. If validated, then something should be done. Well, speaking about this matter, you know, you talked about the fact that uh, at the moment nobody has been arrested, uh, things should yeah. have been done. Is it that at the end of that fracas, the police should have just moved in, invited certain people for questioning, to be seen to have been doing something, or arrested them outright? Well, you should ask yourself, if such a fracas happened in public domain, apart from the hallowed ground of the parliament, what will have happened? People have been arrested. So what makes the difference? Is it because political people are involved that the law is kept in abeyance? Well, this also talks a lot about what perhaps some say what we should expect ahead. Another thing that, well, these guys come from society, and we should look inwards and see how do we change all of this? That one former president came and said, look, it's got to be the rule of law, the rule of law, the rule of law. Others thought, yeah, what's with the rule of law? We obey the laws, by the way. But now it is done in us that there's a lot more homework that has to be done in society about the law. Yes, uh, it's not only about the law. You see, the law is a contextual instrument as an instrument for guidance, you know, normative uh, relationship between us. But more importantly, within the context of the culture of the society, there are values. And over a period of time, you find out that every society has to determine what are the values that is going to guide our norms of behavior. And this goes beyond the law. And you find out that once that fabric breaks down, law and order would consequently break down. Because if the values that are supposed to inherently keep people and in every society, this exists. I, I know, for example, within the Southwest, because I'm a Yoruba stock, there is the concept of Omoluabi. And that restrains you that Omoluabi will not do this. You know? Even in South Africa now, you find out that after apartheid, they had to, you know, reorientate the, 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 the basis of their existence with the concept of Ubuntu. And Ubuntu is a concept of humanity dignity, rule of law, so that it cautions anybody that would this pass the test of the cultural value of Ubuntu. You ask yourself, if you go to the north, if you go to the south, we have these tenets of behavior. But the moment people get into politics, people start becoming lawyers. Everybody interprets the constitution, and everybody <laughs> interprets it to suit himself in out of context. You know, let, let's quickly go to the National Assembly. I don't know if you followed the debate at the House of Representatives in particular, yeah. where uh, some one of the uh, lawmakers there was talking about Section 1, Subsection 2 uh, of the Constitution and was quoting that part saying that uh, anybody or any persons who try to take over the, the yeah, powers of the country yeah, or any part of the country thereof through unconstitutional means, yeah, yeah. you know, will be liable to something. But 
and they say that that is the basis for treasonable felony. Do you think that, that is an extremity in this particular case? Well, basically, uh, it's, an, it's an interpretation that is so literal that it's out of context. That provision is to guide a, against a coup d'etat or a forceful takeover of government by any means other than constitutional means. So unless you can establish that that has taken place, that provision will not apply. Then there was also the request... Um, you talked about section 215. Uh, they also mentioned that particular part, subsection yes. 4, and they were saying something about amending it. I mean, definitely the, cons the makers, the, the people who wrote the Constitution, who put in section 4 and also added a proviso, must have, you know, had something at the back of their mind when they did that. Do you think that that part should be done away with in the Constitution? Well, you see, there's been a lot of debate as to the, the, the hierarchy of the police, having a centralized police with the command hierarchy uh, being located in the presidency, in the sense that the Inspector General of Police is the head of the police, but is subject to the authorization of 